Welcome to part five in the basic energy analysis series, Measuring Weather. In the series so far, we have explained basic concepts surrounding energy analysis, referencing weather as an important independent variable. In this video, we will explain how weather is turned into numbers that we can put into a consumption model using heating and cooling degree days. In the second video in this series, we build up a mathematical model for the three components of energy consumption. Let's briefly recap here. We showed the base load as Q equals Tx, where Q is the consumption for the period, T is the daily consumption, and X is the number of days. Then we added the heating component, the product of a heating constant H and the heating load Y during the meter reading period. The last consumption piece we looked at was the cooling component, handled in a similar way to the heating. The term Cz consists of a cooling constant C for the particular metered service multiplied by the cooling load Z. Y and Z are derived from the local temperature conditions over the period. Any building in a location where mechanical heating is needed for at least part of the year can be shown to have a characteristic balance point temperature for heating. This is the outside temperature below which the mechanical heating system needs to operate. The heating balance point is particular to each building and is a factor of the building size, lighting, insulation, number of occupants, machinery, anything that generates heat internally and affects the rate of heat loss through the building shell. Software can be used to calculate this balance point by correlating energy consumption against the outside temperature over an extended period of time. The same factors that influence the heating balance point also impact the balance point for cooling, or the temperature at which cooling systems would be switched on to keep the building comfortable for occupants. These two balance points are not necessarily the same, as there is usually an outdoor temperature range where neither heating nor cooling are required. Heating degree days are units of outdoor air temperature over time used as a measure of heating load. The HDD value for a single 24-hour day is the difference between the daily mean temperature and the heating balance point when the outdoor temperature is below the balance point. When the daily mean temperature is above the heating balance point, there is no heating load, so the HDD value is zero. The HDD value for any period is the sum of the heating degree days for all the days in the period. In this example, the heating balance point for a building is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. You would calculate 13 heating degree days of heating load for a day with a daily mean temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit. If on the following day the daily mean temperature is 70 degrees, heating degree days for the same building would be zero. The cumulative heating load for the two days would be 13 heating degree days. Cooling degree days work in reverse. The CDD value for a day would be the difference between the daily mean temperature and the cooling balance point for the building but only when the daily mean temperature is higher than the cooling balance point. Let's look now at the mean daily temperature profile for an entire year. The balance point temperatures dictate which days require heating and which days require cooling. If our heating balance point is 65 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, any day with a mean temperature below 65 would require heat. The amount of heating for any particular day is dictated by the difference between the daily mean temperature and the heating balance point. Looking across the whole year, the area beneath the heating balance point shows the annual heating load, or in other words, the severity of the winter. If the cooling balance point is 70 Fahrenheit, any day warmer than 70 will require cooling. The area above the cooling balance point is the annual cooling load. In this example, we can see that the weather sensitive energy use is dominated by heating, so it's a cooler climate. For most buildings, there is a temperature range between the two balance points when no heating or cooling is required. These are the days when internal heat sources, such as lighting, people, and equipment, can be offset by overnight cooling of the building structure or by using mechanical systems to bring in cool outside air. The green lines show the meter reading period for a single utility invoice. Note that it contains a mix of heating days, cooling days, and unconditioned days, a common occurrence. Of course, weather is more than just outdoor temperature. Wind, humidity, cloud cover, and precipitation all have an effect on the heating and cooling required in a building. 
More air conditioning will be needed on a bright, humid day, for example, than on a cloudy and less humid day. However, outdoor temperature is the major weather element, and it serves as a reasonable proxy for the other elements. Adding more weather variables would increase the complexity of any analysis, so the energy efficiency industry has accepted this simplification. It is quite possible that future work will bring these other variables into accepted industry practice. This concludes our video series, Basic Energy Analysis. We hope that you found this information helpful and that your future energy management efforts are successful. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them on our website at www.managingenergy.com or with the videos. Thanks for watching.